Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Welcome to the broadcast today. This is our Tract and Truth Tuesday edition here at Bible Tract Echoes. If you are a regular listener, you know that we generally walk through a book of the Bible, studying it, hopefully trying to make some practical application to what that particular book of the Bible says to those interested in telling the gospel to lost people. And uh, we do that every day, except We set aside our Tuesday broadcast to really focus on encouraging one another to tell the gospel, hopefully helping each other to become more effective in telling the gospel, and that's our goal today. If you can, have your Bible open to the book of Jeremiah. Now, I realize that recently we studied through the book of Jeremiah. I'm going to come back here and pick up one verse out of Jeremiah chapter 23. Jeremiah 23, I'm going to be reading verse 29 here in a moment. If you can, turn in your Bible and join me there. If you have a heartbeat to want to tell lost people about how to know Christ as your Savior, then you need to be listening today in a particular way. Perhaps today you do not know Christ as your Savior. I hope you'll listen. We want to tell you how to receive him. Again, if you can have your Bible open to Jeremiah 23, that would be good. I have a couple of gospel tracts I want to uh, share with you, but I just want to ask, first of all, this very simple question. How would you personally define the word missions? Missions. I'm talking particularly as we use that term in Bible preaching churches. How would you define that term? There are multiple definitions that can be used. Often, if you come from a Bible preaching church, you'll use that term and use it to talk about people that are in full-time missionary ministry, often in another country that is not their own. But really, missions applies to all of us. My typical definition for missions is this. Missions is handing the good news of God's salvation to the world. Handing the good news of God's salvation to the world. Recently, I've had the experience of seeing some young people get saved. By the term young people, I mean older, junior age kids. I'm talking about kids that are 10, 11, and 12, but then some teenagers as well. This happened near the uh, a town near St. Louis. But then I had a pastor friend call me. He told me of an elderly man who passed away. This man was about 105 years of age, but the man had prayed to receive Christ when he was exactly 100 years of age. Uh, Friend, how did either of those situations happen? How did young people come to Christ? How did a 100-year-old man come to Christ? Well, the answer is simple. Both of them had their lives impacted by the Bible, pictured as a fire and a hammer. We're going to talk about that here today on the broadcast. I have a letter here I want to read to you. This comes from a man named Robert. He's a prisoner in the state of Wisconsin. I cannot read the entire letter. Frankly, what impressed me about this man is that not only is he a believer, not only does he want to pass out gospel tracts and share the gospel, he even made a donation to the ministry. And if you know anything at all about prisoners and their income, money to them does not come easy. He gave us a gift. That just touched my heart. But he says this in part. He says, thank you for your service to the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am daily blessed and challenged by your radio broadcast. And then he mentions where he listens and what part of the dial. He goes on to says, please accept my donation to help further the gospel of Jesus Christ to a hurting and dying world. 
I'm in prison right now, and this is a dark place in serious need of the gospel. I am prayerfully requesting, and then he mentioned some tracks he would like to get. He says, I want to share Jesus Christ with those here around me. Then he says this statement, Islam is really taking over fast. Please pray for us. Please pray for us. I don't know if you've been listening in recent weeks. We not long ago had a series of broadcasts with our key gospel worker in the country of Pakistan. We are right now, as you're hearing this broadcast, completing the printing of one million gospel tracts there in the country of Pakistan. A million. And we're pretty much guaranteed, based upon a five-year track record, that of that one million, five hundred of those tracts will be read. Or perhaps a better way would be that 500,000 people will read those gospel tracts. If you are interested in praying for the work of the gospel, pray for Pakistan right now. Because we know that based upon 500,000 people reading the gospel tracts, 250,000 will ask for more information. Many of those people will get involved in a correspondence course. Many of those then will come to know Christ as Savior. These are exciting days to be working in the gospel. Whether you are in prison, whether you're in Pakistan, or whether you live in Main Street, USA, the gospel is working in the lives of people. No matter what language that you may speak at your place, the gospel will have an impact. We need to be telling the gospel. I want you to get some gospel tools from us. We call them gospel tracts. A gospel tract is simply a short written presentation telling somebody of their need of a Savior because they're a sinner, who that Savior is. It's Jesus Christ, what Christ has done to save them from their sin. He died on the cross, was buried and rose again, and then how they can receive him. Two often used tracts here are in my hand right now. One is entitled The Gift. The Gift, a very simple, straightforward, clear gospel tract. Salvation is a gift. It's not earned. It's not deserved. It's not merited by our good works or being good in the, God, in the sight of God. Salvation is a gift from God we receive by faith due to God's grace. The Gift, a simple but very clear gospel tract. Please, here's one that will you'll find as a useful tool for you. Here's a tract for teenagers entitled, I Have Plenty of Time. I Have Plenty of Time. Again, not a long track, a very clear, straightforward track that many young people think they have all the time in the world to wait and deal with God, but they don't. You and I both know of young people, younger than teenagers and teenagers, who have both passed out into eternity. We need to be reaching young people with the gospel. Here's a good, clear gospel track based upon the testimony of a 19-year-old gal named Mary who did not receive Christ, and that night she rejected Christ. She went out into eternity due to a car wreck. Oh, friend, let's be telling the gospel. I have plenty of time. At the end of my broadcast, my announcer is going to come back on. He's going to be telling you three different ways by which you can communicate with us. Be ready. Jot down the way that works for you. Because if you'll do that, give us your name, give us your mailing address. We will send you totally free of charge a complete sample packet of our gospel tracts, which contains one each of all of our English gospel tracts. Please be ready and do that today. Well, do you have your Bible open to Jeremiah chapter 23? Look at verse 29, just by itself. Verse 29 says this, Is not my word like a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rocks in pieces? Let me read it again. This is God talking. Is not my word like a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? Preaching or teaching about the power of God's word is not hard to do. Frankly, it's a whole lot of fun. The problem is not preaching and teaching about the power of God. The real issue is living out the truth that God's word is a fire and a hammer. The Bible uses multiple symbols to describe itself. 
You know this verse, it says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet. It's a lamp to our feet. Jesus used the illustration of a man going forth to, with seed to sow. And the seed is a picture of the Bible. The Bible is the sword of the spirit. The Bible is described other places as a shield. The Bible is in Hebrews chapter four, described as our judge, our critic. The Bible in the book of the Psalms is described as a furnace that refines us. Here, the symbols used for the Bible are a fire and a hammer. Old farmers understand the power of fire and hammer working together. I grew up in upstate New York, and uh, there in those fields, there would be some stones. It was full of stones. A lot of them were small, and those really weren't a problem. Every once in a while, you find a larger stone that the farmer would have to remove. But then, every once in a while, he'd find a boulder in his field, and the boulders were too large to be moved. He couldn't budge them, whether it was for the tractor or some guys were still, as I was a child, using a horse and so on but they couldn't be moved. Their boulders were too big. So the farmer had to break the boulder. Here's what he would do. He would dig around that boulder with a shovel. Then he would put in wood and put that wood on fire all around the boulder. He would let the boulder heat up all the way through. And when that boulder got hot enough and long enough, that old farmer would take his maul hammer and give that old boulder a whack. That fire and hammer combination would break up the boulder into smaller pieces that could be hauled away. Dear friend, as we study through the book of Jeremiah, often the hearts of the people there were described as stony hearts. That's even used in the New Testament. Stony hearts cannot be pierced by just fancy illustrations that sometimes we preachers like to use. The only way to break up the stony heart of a sinner is to expose that sinner's heart to the fire and hammer of God's word. Romans 1.16. I hope you know the verse. If you don't know it, memorize it. It says this, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation to every one that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, to those that are not Jews. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, for the word of God is quick or living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and joint and marrow, and is a discerner of the thought and intent of the heart. Only the word of God has that kind of power. You can, I can give Give the slickest illustrations, and I believe in illustrations, but illustrations are not to ever get in the way of you and I using the Word of God and talking to believers. You and I need to have the preparedness to know what verses we can use to, to very clearly lay out the simple plan of salvation. Often when I share the gospel, I will use one verse. I will use the verse out of the end of John chapter 3. Now, you're familiar with John 3.16. I use John 3.16 often to refer it to people, but then I turn into the last verse of John chapter 3. Verse 36 is a very powerful verse because it lays out very simply the two categories that people are in. John chapter 3, verse 36 simply says this, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Let's help lost people see that they're either believing and have eternal life, or they're not believing, and God's wrath is upon them. And what God has done through his Son Christ to love them enough to make a way of salvation. Let's be using the fire and hammer of God's word. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. 
Remember, the word tracts is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTractsInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.